What in the world, Bo? It's your boy, Big Low Country. So, look, let's go ahead and acknowledge the six foot two, two hundred and eighty five pound elephant that's in the room, and and Jacob Tatui Mariner. Now, I know that with the Falcons having Dean Pease as their defensive coordinator, everybody's all excited about Dante Fowler being, you know, the guy that's going to be getting sacks for us. But they're not acknowledging that Jacob Tatui Mariner, the undrafted free agent that came in, you know, actually kind of balled out last year. But look here, man. My name is Big Low Country. I'm just an old, old country boy that loves to sit around and talk about sports and former football coach. But look, man. I need you to do a country boy a favor. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button. If you do, I promise you, I'll come do the Y2C you at your wedding one day. But let's go ahead and do what y'all came here for and talk about some football. So, one play that I want to acknowledge uh, is uh, this play right here. First, we're going to play it. Then we're going to come back and take a look at it in slow motion and really break it down. We're going to look at it right now from the pretty side. So, let me go ahead and hit this play button here. Y'all see what happens whenever this uh, play unfolds here. Oh, okay. Okay. That's some good football right there, Bo. Let me let me go ahead and put that thing back for you one more time here. See guys flying around the field, flying around the field. Interception. Beautiful play. Beautiful play. I love it. I love it. All right, so keep your eye on Jacob Tatu and Mariner out there. Now, as you can see, he's lined up in a wide nine. Um, you know, outside of that tight end, he's barely in the picture. <laughs> but with this Dean P's defense, you know, and you can see we got three down linemen on this one. And with this Dean P defense, it's one of those situations where they really focus on creating confusion for the offensive line, right? So uh in their effort of, in creating confusion, what they're gonna do is it's actually gonna put you know that that tackle on a one-on-one -on -one situation um, with a guy that's starting off on his feet, you know, in a two-point stance, 285 pounds coming at him. And, you know, it's, look, it, it, at the end of the day, it's kind of hard. And it, it, it kind of reminds me of Terrell Suggs back in the day. So let's take a look at it here, see how it unfolds. And like I said, keep your eye on him. And also keep your eye on this defensive line here. I love those hands. I love those hands. Great play. Great play. All right, so let's take a look at it. So the first thing that I want to acknowledge is um, our linebackers lined up in the double A gap situation here. You got uh, Aluakin and you got Debo lined up um, in the A gap. Uh, also, uh, you got uh, Grady Jarrett, who's lined up in the three technique right here. And what they're going to actually do is they're going to stunt. So, you know, Grady Jarrett, he's going to, he's going to stunt, uh, and, and fill this gap up while, uh, Stephen Means, he's just going to kind of really kind of come down and wash everything down. Um, so let's take a look at it and y'all just keep your eye, um, on to Tui Mariner as he's going to be one-on-one -on -one. and also keep your eye on uh, Grady Jerry. He's, he's also going to almost get home as well. So let's take a look at this and see how, you know, just kind of see how it unfolds. All right. So you see here, like I said, we got the, the two linebackers in the A-gap. Now they're looking like they're going to come down, but instead of coming down, Watch this. Put a foot in the ground. Both of them flaring out. So both of those guys are flaring out. Meanwhile, like I said before, you got Stephen Means here. Right here. He's not coming up the field. He's actually running sideways. So while he's running sideways, Grady Jerry, he's going to shed. And he's going to actually... Um, fill up the gap that Stephen Means was, was was intended to fill up, and and as a matter of fact, I want to watch. I want y'all to see how Stephen Means um, looks like he's going to come up the field, and then and then pops his hips to the sideline. So watch him right here. He's going to act like he's coming up the field, and then he's going to pop his hips to the sideline. And remember, while all this is going on, watch boom. 
pops his hip sideways. Then you see Grady Jarrett. Now it's one of those situations where uh, Grady Jarrett, he's literally, he literally has the quarterback in his sights right here. And there's nobody in front of him. And to Tui Mariner, he's just putting pressure on the, no, he's putting pressure on that tackle. <laughs> and while all that's going on, like I said, you talk about that confusion uh, on part of the offensive line. You got three guys here that's butt to butt to butt and ain't nobody touching anybody. <laughs> that's one thing that you hate to see. You know, if, you, if it's one of those situations where you are offensive line coach or you're offensive coordinator, take a look at those offensive linemen one more time. And like I said, while this is going on to Tua Mariner, he's putting pressure on that quarterback um, with that one-on-one -on -one situation with the tackle. <laughs> As a matter of fact, one of your offensive linemen fell. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. But the beautiful thing is, is that pressure actually forced that quarterback to go ahead and force that throw, and we got a turnover out of the situation. So let's go ahead Take a look at another play. See how it unfolds, Bo. Well, let me tell y'all something, though, Bo. The thing I really like about uh, having a 285-pound uh, outside linebacker that lines up uh, in a two-point stance is the running game. And whenever I say the running game, so I want y'all to check. I want y'all to check the two and Mariner out on this particular play. Now he's lined up in an inside four technique, so he's lined up. Um, uh, on the inside of that left tackle's left shoulder. I'm sorry, the right tackle's left shoulder. Now, uh, I want you to just keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on number 74, that right guard, and, and, and watch how he, uh, you know, just, just watch how he attacks. He's going to have active hands. Y'all know how I'm always talking about those active hands. And he's also going to have active feet. So just take a look at this one right here. Um, and, you know, we're going to look at it, and then we're actually going to try to break it down a little bit. So let's take a look at it here. So he brought Montgomery over in motion, lined up. <laughs> oh, man. Man, I love it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it, Bo. All right, so let's take a look at this one now. So the first thing that I noticed um, is, is, is that, the, the way that he's pointed. And also, I'm noticing um, this alignment. So, once again, we have another three, another three downs, I mean, three down linemen set. Um, and it, everybody shifted over um, to the to the left side of the offensive line. Also, um, your linebackers, they're shifted over to the right side. So, one thing that I really like about this play calling, and I'm liking about the way that Tatui Mariner played this particular play is that, uh, you know, he, he took advantage of his situation. So normally, uh, many times guards, they think that linebackers are always going to go in a straight line, you know, for some reason. And this particular guard, he thought that uh, Tatui Mariner was going to fill up. Uh, he thought he was going to fill up this gap right here. So he thought he was just going to come down and fill this gap up. Well, Unfortunately, <laughs> that wasn't the case for number 74. Unfortunately, it was one of those cases where the two and Mariner pinched. And whenever I say pinch, guys, I mean that he actually came down and filled this gap. Um, he, he actually pinched inside. So he crossed that lineman's face. And, and, you know, he came inside. And, you know, fortunately, it, it was the right play call and the right move to make. But, uh, what we really want to pay attention to is this offensive lineman's feet. And the reason why I say that is because he's going to think that, you know, Tatooine Mariner is going to come straight down and fill that gap up. And after Tatooine Mariner, Tatoo Mariner realizes it, he's going to have those active hands and he's going to be the first to attack. And I want you to watch how these pellets fly up on the field uh, as he sinks those hips down and shifts over. And then he, he he gets his way on through. Okay, so so let's take a look at this one here. Been put it in the slow mo. Oh, wait a minute here. All right, been put it in the slow mo. So so you see here, he's like he's already faced to the inside. 
Now, since he's faced to the inside, uh, the lineman, apparently he didn't realize that. You see that? You see that little jump back? <laughs> you see that little jump back that that lineman did? Watch this. Oh, he got me. <laughs> so, one thing that offensive linemen coach I always teach offensive linemen is that you never want to be in a situation where both of your feet are off the ground at the same time. Because if they are, you're going to be caught off balance. And the first time somebody touches you, you go, you know, you, you ain't going to be able to catch your bearings and they're going to get past you. And, um, you know, this, this is kind of what happened on this play right here. So once again, you see, he took that wide step to the right and then he tried to readjust. It was too late. It was too late. So Tui Mariner had him right where he wanted him. And, and now I want you to take a look at, so he got him. You see that he was the first one to attack. So for everybody out there, for all the kids that's listening, you're playing offensive or defensive line. A coach always used to tell me that the first person that you, that normally wins the fight is the first person that hits. Unless you bomb, 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 rocket, bow, bow. <laughs> In this particular case here, to Tua Mariner, he was the first person to hit. And, 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 and he won the fight. He was the first person to get his hands up, and he won. Now, another thing that I like about this is, is his motor. So, so, so if you look at this particular play here, um, once he, once he um, gets his hands on him and he slides, he gets down, and he, he pops his hips to get to the other side of him to cross his face, and you're going to see those pellets fly up, but he's going to move those arms because, look, I always say that you got to kind of go to acting school. So just so the referee can see what's going on, just in case you can see if, if he's holding, let the referee know, hey, he's holding me. You, you got to pump those arms while you get into that running back. And he's definitely going to do that as well. Look at that. Pumping those arms. Pumping those arms. He was holding. <laughs> but holding is on every play. <laughs> oh, man. So we were talking about being the first one to attack. I want you to I want y'all to see what happens when you're not the first person to attack. We all know that Grady Jarrett, he's a great player and everything. Great player, probably best player on this Atlanta Falcons defense. But I want y'all to keep your eye on old Grady right here. <laughs> Even the best get beat sometimes, Bo. Keep your eye on old Grady. So Grady, he wasn't the first one to attack. And Grady, he finna get kind of washed out of this play here. Keep your eye on old Grady. Mm. Yeah, he kicked him out the whole play. Kicked him out the whole play. Because he wasn't the first person to get his hands up. He wasn't the first person to get his hands on him. Man. Woo, boy. I love me some good run defense, guys. I love it, and that's one of the reasons why I'm really excited about the Tua Mariner. Let's take a look at one more play to see what we got going on with this guy. Once again, coaches, we're going to go ahead and highlight this guy's pass rushing abilities. So, um, once again, he's lined up um, wide nine. This time, he actually looks like he actually has his hand in the ground. So, he, he's, he's considered a down lineman on this one. So, that, that definitely shows that he's versatile, you know, to be an undrafted free agent, you know, he, he's definitely a versatile guy. So let's take a look at this one. Uh, and then we're going to uh, take a look at it and kind of break it down. Mm, beautiful play. Beautiful pass rush. Beautiful pass rush. Man, so, so, so did you guys see that motor? So... Uh, one thing that I noticed is that he uh, started off with both hands in the ground. That's one thing that you see speed rushers do. You know, whenever they lined up in that wide nine, speed rushers normally, you know, come with that, the, with those two hands in the ground. We've seen Vic Beasley do that all the time because he needed all the help that he could get, poor thing. <laughs> but um, once again, we're going to see these active hands um, that he has. And he's going to be the first one as, as he comes up field. He's going to kind of play a game of chicken with this, with this, with this tackle. Um, you know, tackle. He's not going to know when to shoot his hands because you know, he's coming in so fast. But he's just going to shoot him and 
Uh, he he going to give a little patty cake move. Patty cake, get past him, get to the quarterback. Great pass rush. Let's take a look at it. So I like the way that he's angled. And one thing, uh, one thing that I also want you to notice is that um, to to make sure that it's a one on one situation on the outside, I see that we brought Foyer Lewican um, down on that on that blitz. So um, whether it's whether it's this left guard. Or whether whether it's uh this running back, uh Jacob, Josh Jacob, Jingle Hyper Schmidt, um, either way, it's gonna be a one on one situation because uh they don't know that he's blitzing until it's too late. And then, you know, by the time they realize it, as long as everybody does their job, it's gonna be a one on one situation. So let's take a look at it here. So keep your eye on to Tua Mariner. Watch that. Boom. First, put the hands. Get your hands off of me. Beautiful pass rush. Look, I tell my guys all the time, whenever whenever you're rushing the passer, you're rushing the passer like, you, you know, like you're, you're too good for other people and you don't want people to put their hands on you. So, you know, you, you're going to shoot that hand and then once they shoot it, knock them down. Knock them down. Knock them away. I don't care what you got to do. If they, if they can't touch you, they can't stop you. You know, if they can't touch it, they can't stop you. And that's definitely what uh Tatooine Mariner did on this one. Watch this. Boom, shot that hand. Knock the hands off. Got him. Got to the quarterback. Good chop. Then gets up. <laughs> Still trying to get the ball and recover it. And recover the loose ball as well. So, look, man. You can't even knock it. You compare these two guys. If you compare uh, Dante Fowler and Jacob Tatui Mariner, Dante Fowler played, I believe, 601 snaps last season. Tatui Mariner played like 347 snaps. So he literally played 62% of the snaps that Dante Fowler had. In that span, uh, he had a sack. Dante Fowler only had three sacks. Um, he also had... A forced fumble. Dante Fowler also had a forced fumble, but three fumble recoveries. That means that he's a guy with a high motor that's always trying to get to the ball. Also, Dante Fowler had 24 tackles, and 13 of those tackles were solo. Guess how many Jacob Tatui Mariner had? He had 31 tackles. 24 of those tackles were solo tackles. The other seven were assists. The numbers don't lie, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well look man i appreciate y'all for chilling out with me make sure that you hit that subscribe button much love to you y'all don't do nothing that i would do y'all stay easy man